Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good morning. On this, the 4th of July, our Independence Day, before beginning Holy Mass, let us all turn to the, to the American flag and offer our Pledge of Allegiance, and then after that, we will have our National Anthem played. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will go unto the altar of God. To God be joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Heaven and earth. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now let us turn unto the altar of God and make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault, I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ah, sinful nation, people laden with wickedness, evil race, corrupt children, they have forsaken the Lord, spurned the Holy One of Israel, apostolatized. The Lord is with you when you are with him, and if you seek him, he will be present to you. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, he is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you bless those who seek you and punish those who forsake you. Grant us the grace never to reject your Son, for in him alone do we find our salvation. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you call this nation into being that it may serve as a haven to the oppressed people of the world. Even as we remember our declaration of independence, so may we always rely on your blessing and providence to serve as examples of God-fearing people. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. On this, the 14th Sunday in the Ordinary, we take the first reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Heart of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, and whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, and, that, and shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual for today. But this people's heart is stubborn and rebellious. They turn and go away. They did not listen, but were stiff-necked as their fathers who have not believed in the Lord their God. The second reading for today is taken from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. 
But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses, in order that the power of Christ might dwell in me. Therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. But today you have rejected your God, who delivers you from all your evils and calamities. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. Mark. Glory be to you, Lord. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother, brother of James and Joes and Judas? And Simon, and not are all his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. First of all, on this Independence Day, let us all pause and celebrate that special gift that we received from our founding fathers, the gift of independence, to be able to decide our way of life in a democracy that so many offered their lives for so that we could have these freedoms for free. With that being said, I would like to offer another sermon. And this will be based upon the Word of God. But the Lord said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. These words are taken from the second letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my 
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, in a 1987 article found in the Journal of Neurology, Neurosurgery, and Psychiatry, Dr. Lansborough discusses the possibility that St. Paul suffered from what he called temporal lobe epilepsy, which would account scientifically to some of Paul's revelations and visions and a possible explanation to his thorn in the flesh. Epilepsy is defined as a neurological disorder that causes seizures and unusual sensations and behaviors. Paul makes reference to this illness in his letter to the Galatians, chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, when we read, Though it was because of an illness that I preached the gospel to you on my former visit, and although my flesh was a trial to you, you did not scoff at me or spurn me, but rather you welcomed me as an angel of God. We cannot explain exactly what Paul's illness was or what his thorn in the flesh was, but the connection between St. Paul and epilepsy was so strongly perceived that in old Ireland, for example, epilepsy was sometimes known as St. Paul's disease. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8, Paul writes, Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. I think the next scriptural verse can help to provide hope and comfort to all those who suffer illnesses, sicknesses, trials, and tribulations. Paul writes, but the Lord said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. My grace, sufficient for you. Grace is such an important gift that comes from God. Grace is that divine gift that gives one strength in whatever adversity one must endure. It is in this faith that carries one to whatever troubles may come their way. I recently came across a story centered about the tragedy of the collapse of the 12th floor Champlain South Towers in Surfside, Florida. With 18 recovered bodies so far, and over 140 who are still missing. A daughter, whose mom was in the tower when it collapsed, was asked by a reporter about how she was doing in such adversity. And to paraphrase, she said, You know, I lost my dad last month to the coronavirus. And now with my mom, I have turned ever more to God, who has given me the strength to endure whatever may be regarding my mom, whether she is found alive or whether her remains be found or not. I know that she is in the grace of God because of her faith, just as my dad was, and just as I am today. Talking about strength that God gives to those who are emotionally, mentally, and spiritually weak. Did not Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount give comfort to his listeners when he said, Blessed are those who mourn, 
for they will be comforted. Just think about all that Paul endured because or during his ministry to the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 through 28, he writes, Five times I have received from the Jews, forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I received a stoning. Three times I was shipwrecked. For a night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys, in danger from rivers, danger from bandits, danger from my own people, danger from the Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers and sisters, in toil and hardship, though many a sleepless night, hungry and thirsty, often without food, cold and naked. And besides other things, I am under daily pressure because of my anxiety for all the churches. And then he writes, Who is weak? For am I not weak? Who is made to stumble? But I am I indignant? With all of Paul's adversities and possibly suffering from grand mal seizures because of his epilepsy, Paul firmly declares in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, so I will boast all the more gladly because of all of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ might dwell in me. You know, with all his hardships that ended in his final imprisonment and execution by beheading, Paul boasts to the congregation in Corinth of his hardships. Paul goes on to say, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. My brothers and sisters, in the closing of the second letter of Paul to Timothy, who was a young priest, Paul writes in chapter 4, verse 6 through 8, As for me, I have already been poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his reappearing. The other thing in closing, my brothers and sisters, is the deep love and devotion that Paul had to our Lord amid all his hardships and difficulties. He writes in his letter to the Romans, and he asks the question, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. May we find strength in our relationship with God, especially when we are at our lowest point. For it is through the grace of God that is sufficient for each and every single one of us. And it is in his power that we are perfected 
through our own weaknesses. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Do you not think that a much worse punishment is due the one who has contempt for the Son of God, considers unclean the covenant blood by which he was consecrated, and insults the Spirit of Grace.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray, O Lord our God. Be pleased with the gifts we bring to your altar and make them the sacraments of our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, O Lord our God, bless these gifts that we offer on behalf of our American nation. May we derive spiritual benefits from this glorious offering to fulfill worthily your divine will. We ask all of this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We come to you this day in prayer and gratitude for your providence. Through the history of our beloved nation, you have been with us. May all nations be glad in exalting you because you rule all the people with your love. May we have the strength to serve you and one another more faithfully, that we may attain eternal life and presence in you. Therefore, we join with the voices of angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating very humbly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Zanana in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Zanana in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer up to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony our Prime Bishop and Paul our Bishop and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. In our prayers this day, let us remember the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed, all those who suffer from the coronavirus, and pray also for them, as well as for their families. Let us be thankful and give God our gratitude for all doctors, nurses, first responders, and healthcare workers. In our deepest prayers, let us pray for all abused and neglected children as well as all abused and neglected animals and all victims of violence both here and abroad. Let us be thankful and give God our thanksgiving for all those who serve in our armed forces and pray that God would return them safely to their family and friends. And especially on this day, let us remember all those who are suffering from the collapse of the building in Surfside, Florida, and pray that God, through His grace, may give peace of blessing and peace of heart. And finally, let us pray for one another, for all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you the sacrifice and praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, 
but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family. And so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries, and with spiritually and bodily, in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in the Immaculate Host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit.
forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and then following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Lord, from all evils past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us, living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall we return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. 
May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, let us offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, what we have received unto our lips, may we precede mentally. And may this careful gift become to us an everlasting gift. May your body, O Lord, which I have received, your blood, which I have drunk, cling to my innermost being and grant that no sin remain in me, in whom these holy sacraments have nourished, who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, help us who have shared your body and blood to know you through the work you do in our midst. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for allowing us to partake of these heavenly gifts. Grant us the treasured gift of national freedom. May we faithfully serve you and always cherish the liberties of our heritage. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity with the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifices offer. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice <coughs> which we, the unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the life. Life with the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness 
to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him be empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. Again, my brothers and sisters, I thank you for coming and sharing with us today Holy Mass and the proclaiming of the Word. Again, on this, the 4th of July, our independence, where we pledge allegiance to the flag and where we say one nation under God, the importance of having one nation under God is kind of like in step to what I said during today's sermon that whatever problems that we may have personally within our families or even within our nation that it is the grace of God that is sufficient enough that even through all our weaknesses that we end being perfected in strength and the power of Almighty God may God bless all of you on this 4th of July Enjoy your time with your families a lot more than we actually celebrated last year. And may freedom ring. We will offer a final prayer on this, the 4th of July. And then we will also offer a final prayer for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed brothers and sisters. May God be with all of you until we come together again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all the intentions that we offer during Holy Mass, and for the blessing of Almighty God to rest upon our great nation and its people, may we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones, Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. And let perpetual life shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.